Well, hello everyone. I am Matt Williamson, two-parter today. I am going to introduce you to this very good Buffalo Bills team, but not unbelievably good. And the second half of the podcast, I want to talk a little bit about what I wrote for this week. Uh, go check out my article, please. So after winning their final three games, the last two on the road, finished the regular season, Steelers finished the regular season 10 and 7, winning five of their eight games away from home. Over the course of the season, the Steelers were outscored by 20 points. Pittsburgh played eight games against teams in the playoffs and won five of them. Pretty good. Bills were four and one against current playoff teams. Buffalo won the AFC East for the fourth straight season, and this is their fifth year in a row that they have been to the playoffs. Been one of the powerhouses in the league now for half a decade. By beating the Dolphins and in the final game of the season, Buffalo is on a five-game winning streak, ending the season eleven and six. They are seven and two this season at home. Their plus 140 point differential was fourth best in the NFL. These are two of the dozen NFL teams to finish the regular season with double digit wins and two of the seven in the AFC. Turnover differential. Pittsburgh's plus 11 is better than every team except the Ravens and Giants. The Bills are at plus two. The Steelers have 27 takeaways compared to 30 by Buffalo. Only the Ravens and Giants have more takeaway than the Bills. The Bills have 18 interceptions compared to 16 by Pittsburgh. The Bears and Niners are the only defenses with more interceptions than Buffalo. The Bills' 12 fumble recoveries is also more than all defenses except for four. But the Steelers are right behind them with 11 fumble recoveries. The Bills' 28 turnovers, though, is tied for seventh most in the NFL whereas the Texans are the only team with fewer turnovers than the Steelers' 16. Buffalo has thrown 18 interceptions compared to nine by the Steelers. The Bills had their first red zone turnover of the season in the first quarter last week in Miami, and Josh Allen threw two first quarter interceptions in the end zone in that game. For the season, this might shock you, Buffalo is passing the football 54% of the snaps, and the Steelers are at 527 That's the 27th and 28th highest, respectively, in the league. Lowest, I should say. They're they're running the ball the highest. So this is the lowest in terms of passing percentage. But over the past three weeks, the Bills are all the way down at 47.7. That's 30th. And the Steelers are 39.8. That's 32nd in terms of percentage of pass. So they're first and run. For the season, no offense throws the ball at a lower clip at home than the Bills, and no team throws the ball a lower percentage on the road than the Steelers. The Steelers have produced 20 more rushing first downs than their opponents this season, but 33 fewer passing first downs. Pittsburgh's opponents have thrown for 10 more touchdowns than the Steelers as well, but the Steelers have seven more rushing scores than what they've allowed. They're also plus 11 in sack differential. The Bills have scored 20 more touchdowns than they allowed and 68 more first downs. They're plus 30 in sack differential, which is massive. They ran 100 more plays this season than their opponents. Buffalo has the NFL's fourth best time of possession at 31-43 over the past three games. It is up to 32-38. It's even better. After holding the ball for 34-54 last week, Pittsburgh is up to 29-38 for the season, but 33-32 over their past four games. Buffalo ran 29 more plays than the Dolphins last week and possessed the ball for 38-07. At home, the Bills are fourth best in time of possession. However, the Steelers are fifth best on the road at 31-19. Mason Rudolph, 8-4-1 as a starter for your Steelers. Over the past two seasons, the Steelers are 17 and four in games in which they did not throw an interception. This year, they're nine and two. Just don't throw a pick. The Steelers are also nine and two in one score games for 2023. For his career, Mike Tomlin has a 0.615 winning percentage in such games, which is the best in the NFL. Steelers are five and zero in the month of January over the past two seasons. And with the win in Baltimore last week, Mike Tomlin broke a tie with Bill Cowher for the most 10 win seasons by a Steelers head coach. This was his 10th such campaign in 2023. Pretty impressive.
With the NFL playoffs right around the corner and NBA season in full swing, Bet Online has you covered with all the up to second odds, news, and scores. With additional odds, lines, and trends and info on both desktop and mobile, you can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head there today to get in the action and see all the updated odds. Remember to use our promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, all caps, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. The crux of my article this week, I do one a week, go check it out. Um, It's basically, it's really bad news that TJ Watt is out. Yes. Okay. I think we can all figure that out. You don't need my help to know that that has massive ripple effects. The only thing about that is I wonder, does Liao do any outside linebacker edge stuff? Maybe, but he's kind of fallen out of favor and is bulked up. And I think you're fine with the Herbig golden combination, just spike what they do. Now, there is some optimism, though. As I told you guys before, the the inside linebacker snap distribution in this past week was very clustered between four dudes. I mean, it was Robinson. It was Roberts. I mean, et cetera. I mean, it was... uh, the usual, Miles Jack, Michael Walker. Jack played 35, Walker played 24, Roberts 22, and Robinson 13. So after really digging into this, and this is what I suspected, Roberts probably shouldn't even have been out there. And I fully expect him to far and away lead the out, off the ball linebackers and snaps in Buffalo. You know, that, that game was a stretch for him to play and he was in and out. So that has a major ripple effect. He should be out there most downs. I also think this was Mark Robinson's best game, but that doesn't mean he's going to all of a sudden be out there all the time. Jack, I think more is less at this stage of his career. So the linebacker situation should be better. The safety situation should be massively better, though. KZ returns, and I can almost promise you Minka is going to return. Now, what do you do with Peterson? What do you do with Rowe? I think Peterson goes back to corner for this game. Porter follows Diggs. Peterson's the number two. Wallace goes to the bench, and then Wallace comes in in nickel or dime when you have three corners out there, which all those things are a good ripple effect. Sullivan could be your slot. Peterson could be your slot. See how that works out. In two safety sets, I'm torn if it'll be KZ or Rowe, and we'll know more when practice starts. I'll get that information for you. But either way, I think they go back to playing a lot more big nickel with all three of those guys on the field, which means way less Killebrew, which is great. He's a special teamer. And I also think that gives you a lot of options against Dalton Kincaid. I mean, to me, he's their second most dangerous receiver as a big tight end wide receiver combination player. So, yes, they don't have Watt. That's terrible. But if you think of Porter on Diggs, maybe Minka just following Kincaid around the whole time. uh, Three safeties on the field and big nickel, which also lessens the load on your linebackers. I think that's what you're going to see here. And not so bad. I mean, at least you're getting something back of to help the spine of your defense. I mean, that was really the crux of my article was the spine looks better while the edge just got worse, of course. But it's also a, how about this, golden opportunity for those other edge guys to have a solid game, you know, get one good game out of it. So go read the article, leave me a comment. A lot of you already have and left me some nice stuff. I appreciate that. But I laid out there a little bit better in terms of snap counts and percentages and things like that too. So take care, over and out.